Y'all, today we've got a really special treat for you, a true Southern staple. We're coming to you from the kitchen right here at the Arkansas Woodcutter Homestead. And um, somebody else is gonna be cooking. Y'all come back and watch this. Well, we have the recipe box. And in the recipe box is this recipe for a pie crust. And this is the pie crust that I like to use. It's from the um, recipe collection of my Aunt Wanda, Wanda Taylor. And I always love this one. Start with one and a half cups of flour, which I've already measured out. Three fourths cups of shortening. We'll use some butter to I think that is about one fourth cup. And there's another quarter cup. My Aunt Wanda is a really good baker. She bakes bread and rolls every time that we have a um, family get together, Thanksgiving or Christmas, both. And um, she has three sons and they, so I guess feeding them all of those years, she uh, had to be a good cook, of course. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of this. Um, this is some butter that Chloe found at the um, grocery store close to us and it was I don't know how much it was, but it was a giant thing of butter. And so we've enjoyed it. Of course, um, it was about, it was about that long to begin with. So since we have not quite three fourths cup of shorting, I'm gonna use just a little chunk of butter because butter really, uh, honestly, in my experience can be substituted for just about anything that you would use um, shortening in. Um, so on our uh, recipe card that is, I love that it's handwritten by my aunt as well and it's kind of got some spots on it so you can tell that it's been used. So I'm just gonna cut this in to the flour before I add the water, a little bit of salt. Actually, well, um, before I finish cutting that in, I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt. Not much. Just a little bit. Maybe not even enough, but. I've never had a pot crust that tasted not salty enough, so it'll be fine. Pastry cutter to cut the uh, shortening and a little bit of butter <clears throat> into the flour. So once that uh, shortening and butter's cut in, it's a little bit of a crumbly mixture like this. and. Then you want to add some cold water. We're doing a half of three-fourths of a cup of cold water is what the recipe says. So I'm just going to keep using that knife to stir it in. When you're making something like this, uh, I may have to add a little more water to it. Uh, maybe not. We will see. Once that starts kind of coming together, I'm going to uh, put it out on the cabinet and uh, roll it up. So put a little flour down. This recipe actually says it makes two or three pie crusts. We'll get at least two of them. But I'm only going to use one today because I only feel like making one pie. 
chest pie, by the way, is our goal here. So. Um, when like our kids were little and I would make pies, um, the pie crust would kind of diminish as I was in this stage of it because they all like to eat dough, kind of like their mom. I uh, like to eat pie crust dough, cookie dough, cake batter, biscuit dough. <laughs> so anyway, get that kind of to where it's staying together and it's not really sticking too much to your hands. I mean, it's got some on my hands, but not, not a lot. And then I'm just gonna divide it in half. It's a pretty good recipe if you wanna make like a fruit pie or something that you have to have two pie crusts, one for the bottom and one for the top. But so, um, for chest pie, you just have one crust on the bottom. And as you're using your rolling pin, at times you may find it sticking a little, so you can just sprinkle a little more flour on there and just try to get it in a circle or somewhat resembling a circle <clears throat> and if it falls kind of separates just stick it back together and here's a trick that probably everybody that bakes knows about but um to get your pie crust onto the pie plate without kind of flopping it or whatever um, roll it onto the rolling pin like so okay and then lay it over the top of there and then unroll it Ta -da! okay after that step you just kind of press it in there make sure you don't have any hole you know it didn't split or make a hole in the bottom and then just press it in the bottom good um I like to have a thick kind of crust around this edge, but I will peel some of this off. You could cut it or just tear it off, whatever you want to do. And if you have any people that like to eat the pizza, uh, pizza pie crust, then you can give it to them or what, uh, my mother used to do, and I do that sometimes, is we'll put this, these pieces on a cookie sheet and bake them and then just eat it because, you know, if you like pie crust, then you'll just eat it. So uh, I'm going to go around the edge of this and make it stand up. So after all of it's kind of folded up around so you don't have any, like, um, of those big pieces hanging over, then I'm just gonna kind of go around and press it in a little more and make it kind of a uniform shape around the edge. Some people that are a little more of a perfectionist than me might want to do it differently and make it look a little prettier, but honestly, this pie is not going to last long. Well, it's not, might last long because I don't know that everybody really likes it it's kind of my favorite pie um but i mean who doesn't like a bunch of butter and sugar right <laughs> okay so once that's in there then you have your pie crust thanks to uh my aunt wanda doesn't look like that two cups of sugar measured out here and i'm going to put that in along with the eggs so we're going to put four eggs into the recipe 
I don't have any fresh eggs, but I've got these from the grocery store. Uh, so that's, we got two cups of sugar over there and we'll do four eggs. Those eggs are going in there with the sugar and we're going to mix it up. Okay, now we have our half cup of butter melted. Pour that in. And make some more. And there we put a table that tablespoon of cornmeal and a tablespoon of flour. And next there's a half cup of milk and then we need some vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla which this is imitation vanilla, just because I haven't been able to go to the store and think about vanilla. I just keep forgetting. I need to put it on a list, right? Okay. And pour this in here. And turn on the mixer again. And then I'm gonna look at my recipe to make sure that uh, we have everything in there. So cornmeal, butter, milk, flour, and milk. And I have the oven on 350. You can scrape down the sides of this with your spatula. Talk as much as my husband. Hmm. And the fire one. Now, once we get that mixed, we're going to pour it into the unbaked ice shell that we have here. Think 40 minutes in a 350 degree oven. So chest pie, my granny used to make it all the time. This is my mother's recipe that she uses. All right, so now we're gonna put this in the oven. All right, in the oven it goes for 35 to 40 minutes. Thanks for watching. So a friend of mine sent a text about a couple of kittens. Well, actually I had put a post on Facebook saying that we were in search of some cats to have on the farm. Yeah. And a friend of mine sent me a text today and said she knows someone that has these four kittens and she sent me a picture of them and I believe that we will get some cats. This recipe is my mother's, Linda Wolf, and she is a very good cook. Oh, that's the timer. This ended up staying in here for about the 45 minutes, and it's still like jiggly, but not, not much at all. So, I'm gonna get it out. Looking good so far. Flaky crust. <clears throat> Perfect. Get that little bite there. Here is our slice of pie and flaky crust. Yum.